Okay, here we go. All right, welcome to the Lincoln Square Synagogue Beginner's Model Seder, version 5776. 5776, okay? And we have Psachi Septimus with us today, and Yehuda Rudman taking on the, on the film, and we're going to be immortalized, and soon the uh, Cantagotham will be coming. Uh, before we begin the Seder, let me just explain that the Passover celebrates the redemption of the Jewish people from the slavery of Egypt, which took place about 3,327 years ago, something like that, okay? I'm off by, yeah, okay. And uh, remember that the, uh, the 70 members of Jacob's family went down to Egypt, and this was a fulfillment of a covenant that God made with Abraham uh, more than 200 years earlier, where he says, you shall surely know that your children will be exiled, enslaved, and persecuted for 400 years, and then they'll go out with great wealth. So thank God God had mercy on us, and we really weren't persecuted for 400 years. Um, what happened was that the children of Israel went down to Egypt for about 200 years, and they were enslaved, I think, for 116 of those years. And the covenant began with the birth of Isaac. When Isaac was born, so it's 400 years from the birth of Isaac until the exodus from Egypt. Oh, they're here from Ecuador and Israel. Okay, good. All right. Welcome. All right. And um, your papers are here. Right there, that's our papers. Okay? Now, all right. Um, so Passover celebrates that uh, exodus from Egypt and really it's the way that God is identified because if you look at the Ten Commandments uh, it says in the Ten Commandments I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage it doesn't say I'm the Lord your God who created the heavens and the earth so the relationship with the Jewish people and God is really based on the exodus from Egypt it represented the betrothal of the Jewish people to God and the prophet Jeremiah says uh, I remember the kindness of your youth that you followed me into the wilderness in a land that was not sown. So this, uh, the fact that the Jewish people followed God and left what was the relative comfort of Egypt, even though they were slaves, but at least they knew where they were, and went into the wilderness, that's considered a great act of faith. And that's why we celebrate it. But there was another act of faith, and that is, that God told Moses to tell the Jewish people on the 10th day of Nisan, they should each take a sheep and prepare it for the sacrifice for Passover. Now, you know that the Egyptians worshiped the sheep. So this was really like the slaves asserting their independence against their masters. The greatest thing that they could do is say, you know, the masters are going to come. What are you doing with my sheep? My God. Okay. And they said, we're going to slaughter it, you know. And that really was the first step to independence. They had to do something themselves to declare their independence before God could rescue them. And it was only on the night of the 15th, or the day of the 14th, that they sacrificed the sheep. And uh, remember, they put the blood on the lintels of the doors so that God would know which house is a Jewish house. And then at midnight that night, a God came and struck the firstborn of Egypt. And they made their paschal sacrifice. And then they were led out of Egypt that night when Pharaoh came running and saying, you know, oh, we're all going to be dead. Get them out of here. All right. So because of that, we have quite a few rituals that's part of this Seder. Now, the Seder really means order. Seder means order. And you'll see that there are 15 steps of the Passover Seder, and we're going to review them in just a moment. But first, where's Graham? Where is he? Come here, Graham. Do you remember this guy? He starred in, in uh, Lost in Yonkers. This is the guy. He was the star, Lost in Yonkers. Okay? Now he went to, yeah, now he went to Harvard and Oxford and stuff like that. Okay. Get a yarmulke, Graham. Take a yarmulke. All right. All right. Oh, you got a yarmulke. Okay. PT. Yes, dear. Sit down. I know. Okay, I'm going to sit right here. Yeah, okay. Turn the chair around so I can see you. All right. So, uh, our Passover Seder table is prepared with all sorts of symbols about the Passover. All right? Now, first of all, we have the candles that we're going to light. And remember, because it is Friday night, we're going to say a double blessing. Well, actually, 
a double blessing, which is a double blessing, okay? We're going to say, Baruch atah Hashem lokeinu melech olam, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us on the lighting of Lahad Ner Shel Shabbat, the Yom Tov, and the holiday. Then we're going to say Shechianu, okay? When you light the candles, you're also supposed to say Shechianu. Now, because it's Shabbat, because it's Shabbat, now many people don't know this, because it's Shabbat, listen, Alejandro, this is very important. Maya, many people don't know it. Even the Frumis on the West Side don't know this, okay? So listen, because it's Shabbat, we have to light it the Shabbat way. And that means that once you make the blessing, it's already Shabbat, so you can't light the candles. So the Shabbat way of lighting the candles is to light the candles first, cover your eyes, right? You wave your hands as if inviting the angels, okay? And then you open your eyes and you accept the light because once you make the blessing, you can't light the candles anymore. So that's the way the Shabbat candles are lit. That first you light the candles, then you cover your eyes, and then you say, Baruch atah Open your eyes, and then you make the blessing Shechianu. Blessing you, God, who has sustained us and kept us alive for this incredible occasion. Shechianu v'kimanu v'kianu l'zmanaseh, okay? Saturday night, you don't do it that way. Because on Yom Tov, you're allowed to make a fire from an existing fire. So you take a flame, and you make the blessing only one blessing, not Shabbat, right? And then you light the candles with the flame. Not like you do on Shabbat, okay? And then you say Shechianu the second night too, because the first night and the second night are considered like one day, okay? The reason that we have the second day is because we live in exile, okay? So that's the lighting of the candles. You have to have at least two candles, at least two candles, all right? And remember, you have to light them from an exist, well, not the Friday night one. Okay, the Friday night, it's since before you light them before Shabbat, um, you can't light it once it's after Shabbat. So you have to know what the candle lighting time is. I would imagine it's around 7.10, that you have to light the candles by 7.10. Saturday night, you have to light after about 8.10. Okay, you can't light it earlier because it's still Shabbat. All right? So we just lit the candles. And we have our table prepared. First, you have the matzahs. How many matzahs do we have? Three matzahs. Why do we have three matzahs? In case you break one. That's Pizzi. Okay, she's funny. <laughs> Your mother's very funny. You know that, okay? All right. A anyway, Miriam? Okay, they're representing the three divisions of the Jewish people, the Kohanim, the priests, the Levites, and the Israelites. Now, the... Kohanim and Levites are both from the same tribe. They're both Levites. But the Kohanim, the priests, come from one family of Levites, and that's the family of Aaron. Okay, they're Kohanim. Levites serve the Kohanim, and the Kohanim and the Levites serve the Jewish people. It doesn't matter how you put the matzah. You put, you put uh, it yeah, the you're Kohanim. supposed to put the Kohanim on top, right? You, have, you see some of these kala covers. They actually say, it says, Kohanim, Levi, and Israel. And you, you have the three... Separate chambers, but if you cover it, okay? Anyway, all right. Now, another reason that you have three matzahs is, is, what do you say? My, Nidalis. Three matzahs because we have so many rituals as part of the Seder that you need more than the normal two. Now, Shabbat, we always have two chalot, right? Two loaves of bread. And the reason for that is, Betty, because the manna came down double portion on Friday. Okay? And that's why we have a challah both on Friday night and on Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. Two challahs at every meal. Okay? So we have to have the minimum of two. But you also need a three because, first of all, you make the blessing over the mitzvah of eating matzah. So that's one. Then, the, actually, that's two. The first one is Hamotzi Lechem and Aretz, the blessing over the bread. And then, on, and then on Passover, there's a special mitzvah of eating matzah. So that's two. Then you have the korech. Remember the sandwich, right? Where you take the sandwich and you put the charoses, the, 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 uh, the, the um, 
the, the um, marar in it, the bitter herb, okay? So you need extra matzah, so that's why you have, and then you have, you need extra matzah for the afikoman, which you hide later, okay, for the children to steal. So that's why we have three chalot. In addition, we have the Seder plate, okay? Now, on the Seder plate, we have a number of symbols. This is called a, an egg, but it's not a normal egg. It's what? It's burnt and hard-boiled, okay? It's hard-boiled and burnt, okay? Now, why is it hard-boiled? It's hard-boiled because it represents, first of all, the cycle of life, okay? The egg is round, represents the cycle of life, that no matter what happens to us, we're enslaved but we survive, okay? It also represents the Jewish people. The more you boil them, the harder they get, the more resistance they are, okay? But what about the burnt? Why is it burnt? The burnt is because in addition to the shank bone, okay, the shank bone, which represents what? The Paschal lamb, okay? In addition to the Paschal lamb, there was the normal festival sacrifice which is called the Chagiga the festival sacrifice so you burned it to remind you that there was also a second sacrifice on Passover okay so we now have the the bone and the egg and then we have the morar the bitter herb to remind us of the bitterness of enslavement okay bitterness of enslavement hold the tears okay and then we have charosis which is a mixture of apple and wine and nuts, and it reminds us of oh, Sasha, not the bricks, but the mortar, the cement that we use to cement the bricks, okay, that we had to make, okay? And then we have the chazeret, which is a, a green vegetable, a green vegetable, and uh, we also have a karpas, which is another type of vegetable. And we have these two vegetables because we use it for different purposes. One this is celery, okay? We dip into the salt water. Why do we have salt water on the table? Okay, for the tears, okay? That's your cue, okay? Tears, the cue, okay? What tears, what do we have? Uh, what, where do we have tears, uh, Linda? From? From the hard work, okay? Okay, and we also have um, a special mitzvah of achilat karpas, to eat a green vegetable on... Pass overnight, which we're also going to dip into uh, the salt water. So um, that, so we have uh, now we dip a couple of times on Passover, and we'll get back to that. Okay. So this is our seder plate. The only thing that I left out is the wine. The wine. Okay. The wine. We have four cups of wine. Why do we have four cups of wine? Because oh, we're kings. Okay. Because we like to drink. Okay. Now you know, uh, four cups of wine. You know. We live in a very special age. This is probably the first time in all of Jewish history where we have like an enormous selection of good kosher wines, okay? So uh, you could say that we have four cups of wine because each, wine, each time we want to have a different uh, brand, a different flavor, a different, uh, you know, smoothness, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but the wine is supposed to be alcoholic, okay? It's preferable to use alcoholic wine even if it's light alcohol in order to feel free free okay the freedom okay after four cups of wine you feel a little free um if you can't drink wine and you can't drink four cups of wine then you can uh, drink grape juice or you can mix grape juice with it okay it's preferable to have red wine as opposed to white wine to remind us of the enslavement the blood etc etc okay and now um how much wine are you supposed to have? Um, the rabbis say that the first cup of wine should at least be four ounces, four ounces. And you're supposed to drink the majority of the fourth of the, the cup, four ounces. The other two could be a little less, 3.2, okay? And uh, um, <laughs> it is preferable, Alejandro, to drink the full cup. So if you use a big cup, wow. okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, then you're going to definitely be drunk, okay? And uh, uh, this is, you know, uh, you, the best thing is to get a cup that's a little bit over four ounces, okay? And you drink it. Now, remember when you drink it, you have to lean to your left. Lean to your left. 
Okay, and that's called Heseba, leaning to your left. You notice that I have a pillow on my chair with a beautiful pillowcase that says, Halayla Hazek Kulanu Mesubim, which comes from the Manishtana, that the, tonight all of us are uh, reclining, okay? Halayla Hazek Kulanu Mesubim. And you lean on your left as a sign of freedom, okay? Uh, you, you, they used to sit on these couches and you used to lean on the left. The only time that you don't lean on your left, we do lean on the left for the eating of the matzah, but we don't do it for the maror because they're afraid that you're, something is going to go down the wrong pipe, okay? And uh, let's see, where are we? Um, did I cover everything? I think we covered everything. And uh, uh, the only thing is that we have the, the bowl to wash our hands with, and that's for the matzah. Now, with the matzah, the amount to eat for a matzah, the general rule is that you have to eat um, about a half to two-thirds of a machine matzah, of a machine matzah, or a half of a handmade matzah, the big handmade matzahs, okay? And uh, you're supposed to lean to your left. But when it comes to the mitzvah of matzah, you're supposed to eat double that, okay? When you make the blessing over the bread, you're supposed to have double that. All right, and I have a little bag here for the afikoman that we can hide the afikoman so that the kids can be taught. Okay, now, fill your cups with a little grape juice or wine. I don't know where it is. Now, before we start with the Kiddush, all right, and by the way, here's a picture of the Seder plate, of what, what side you put the different species, but turn to page five, okay, that's very important, okay, and we're going to go through the 15 steps of the Passover Seder. The first one is called Kadesh, which is sanctify, making Kiddush over the wine. Urchatz, we wash our hands to prepare for the eating of the vegetable. In ancient times, right, today we wash our hands before eating bread. In ancient times, they used to wash their hands whenever they dipped something into a liquid because the liquid would make it appropriate for it becoming impure. So you had to make sure that your hands were pure, okay? So that's why urchatz, you wash your hands, but you don't make a blessing. You don't make a blessing. Karpas is the vegetable that you dip into the salt water. Yachatz, we break the middle matzah and we save part of it for the afikoman, the bigger part. Magid, we tell the story of Passover. Are you with me on page five? Uh, Rachza, we wash our hands again, but this time we do make a blessing because we're going to eat the matzah. Motzi, we make the blessing over the bread. And that, no, bread. That's the general blessing for bread. And then the next one is the second blessing specifically for matzah. Matzah is bread, okay? Matzah is bread, even though it's not fermented, okay? And then you have moror. We eat the bitter herbs, but don't lean on your left. Korech, we make a sandwich out of the matzah and the moror and the bitter herb. Shulchan orech, we eat the meal. Tzafun, we take out the hidden matzah and we eat it. Barech, we say the grace after meal. Hallel, we sing all sorts of songs of praise to God from the Psalms. And Nirza is the concluding songs and the fun songs of, uh, of Passover, okay? So we're going to start with the singing of the song on page five, okay? Here we go. Hade. All right, if you don't know the melody, fake it. Here we go. Kadei Shurchatz, Kaharpahas Yahachatz, Magid Rachza, Mohotzi Mahatza, Maror Korech, 
שולחן אורך, צפון ברך, ההלל נרצה. Let's try that one more time, it's beautiful, isn't it? קדי שור חץ, קהר פס יחץ, מגיד רחצה, מוציא מצה, מרור כורך, שולחן עורך, צפון ברך, ההלל נרצה. All right, so basically what we do is we lay out the Seder, the order of the evening, even before we begin. That's what Seder is all about. And then we turn to page seven and we recite the Kiddush. Now remember, because the first night of Passover is Shabbat, we're going to start with the Shabbat Kiddush and then conclude with the holiday Kiddush, okay? So everybody rise, lift up your cups. And on the top of page seven, pick up your chair. Okay, that's part of the ritual. Here we go. Vahiyere vaivoke yom ashishi. Vayichulu ashamayim vaharetz vechol tzivaham. ויחל אלוהים ביום השביעי מלאכתו אשר עשה וישבות ביום השביעי מכל מלאכתו אשר עשה ויברך אלוהים את יום השביעי ויקדש אותו כי בול שבת מכל חי בכל כבו שבת מכל מלאכתו, אשר ברא אלוהים לעשות. You see, I'm a beginner's rabbi, I forgot the Kiddush, okay? Now, when we make the blessing, we're not going to really say the full blessing, because we're going to say the second part of the Kiddush, which is not, and we're going to interrupt between the blessing and the drinking of the cup. So we're just going to say, Baruch Atah Hashem. Bari Priyagafa, not the real blessing. And then at the end, when we drink, we'll make the Bari Priyagafa, okay? So now the melody changes to the holiday melody. Savrim Ranan, Vrabanan Vrabotai, Baruch Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Borei Pri Hagafen, the middle paragraph, Baruch HaTashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Asher Balchar Banu Mikolam, Verome Manu Mikol Lashon, Vigidish Anu B'mitzvotav, Vati Ten Lanu Hashem Elokeinu B'Ava, Special Inclusions for Shabbat, Shabbatot L'Mnucha, Umoadim L'Simcha, Chagim Uzmanim L'Sasson, Again Shabbat, את יום השבת הזה ואת יום חג המצות הזה זמן חירותנו, the time of our freedom באהבה, with love מקרא קודש זכר ליציאת מצרים כיוונו בחרת ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים ושבת ומועדי קודשך באהבה וברצון, בשמחה ובששון, הנחלתנו, ברוך אתה השם, מקדש השבת, וישראל והזמנים. Now on Saturday night you would make Havdalah right here, okay? That's the Havdalah. Bori me oreish, you make the blessing over the fire, and you look at your fingers, and then we make the Havdalah, okay? But... On Friday night, we, we add the second blessing, which is the Shechianu, okay? That's the last line of love, the, the, blue, the purple paragraph. Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu melech olam, Shechianu, Vekiyamanu, Vehigianu, Lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who has sustained us and kept us alive and let us reach this momentous occasion. 
What a miracle, right? Okay, and now we're going to sing a little bit of Shechianu. Shechianu, Vikiyamanu, Wee! Vihigianu, Lazmanaze, Shechianu, Vikiyamanu, Vihigianu, Lazmanaze, Lazmanaze, say it! Let's man has it. 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 Let's man Repeat after me. Lasman. 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 Ha ha. Che <laughs> Las manas las man, las man, ha ha, se, all right, Sherwood Gavin, all right, <laughs> all right, Rabbi Ehrman, where are you, Rabbi Ehrman? Everybody know Rabbi Ehrman from Israel? Hey All right. Yeah, very special. In Israel, they don't do this. They do this at the end of the week. In another week and a half, we're already here. We are going to do it every night until Passover. <laughs> till we get it right. Till we get it right. Till we get it right. We're going to get... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the 40th year the Cantor and I are doing this together. Wow. Yep. It's the 40th year. You know Graham? All right, Boston Yonkers. He just found himself back in shul. Okay. All right, now let's make the bracha. And remember, we lean to the left, okay? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pedi Hagafen. Uh uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. What do you mean, only the men? Are you a liberated woman? Yes. <laughs> Lean to the left. Funny, right? She he follows my orders. She's liberated. Ah, <laughs> oh, he just came from the Bells School. I thought we arranged it. There wouldn't be a Bells School tonight. Ay, ay, ay. No, no, no. All right. Cantor Goffin celebrated his 50th anniversary as Cantor of Lincoln Square Synagogue. Do you believe it? And he doesn't look a day over 20. Thank you, sir. That white beer is painted. The pin. <laughs> All right. On Saturday night, we make Havdalah, okay? And you can use, actually, the lights, uh, or you could use the candles that you have burning, so you don't have to light a Havdalah candle. You do not have to light a Havdalah candle. Any lights are good. You'll just look at your fingers, okay? And uh, you say the, uh, the, the special Havdalah, the special uh, formula, okay? All right. So we just did Kadesh, and now we're up to Urchatz, okay? Now, here we have a little washing bowl at our table. And the custom is that you're not supposed to wash your own hands. You're supposed to be liberated. Someone is supposed to wash it for you, okay? So, Graham, you're going to wash my hands for me? Come here, slave. Um, just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. I mean, you know. Uh, 
Okay, so first pour over my right. Don't be cheap. Come on, more water. Okay, up to my wrists, both sides. So make sure that the inside palms is wet as well. And now the other hand. Okay, some people pour it twice. Some people do it three times if you're Chabad. And then you wipe your hands and you don't make a blessing. You don't make a blessing. Um, so you're allowed to talk, okay? So everybody should take, okay? Not me. Um, Karpas, everybody should take a little bit of the stalk of celery. You got the celery? Hazi, you want a little celery? I'll take a little celery. Okay. Yeah, okay. And um, you dip it in the salt water. You see the bowls in front of you, the salt water? Salt water, representing the tears. Okay. And you sit and bend to your left. Okay, remember we lean to the left. And we make the bracha, borei pri ha'adama, which is blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. When you make this bracha, you're supposed to also have the maror in mind. Okay, because later on, we're going to eat the bitter herb. So that's also borei pri ha'adama, the same blessing, so you don't have to make it again. Okay, so here we go. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech olam borei pri ha'adama. I think the person who made the salt water is on a salt-free diet. Uh, yeah. I don't. But the celery is good, right? Oh, it's excellent. We're on page ten. Ten. Those who have the three matzahs in front of you, lift up the three matzahs, okay? And take the middle matzah. Middle matzah and break it in half as close as you possibly can to half. All right, look at me. Pretty cool, huh? Even though I didn't get the lime, but it's down the middle, and you save the bigger piece for the afikoman. The bigger piece for my afikoman. Watch Graham, he's going to try to steal it from me. Lost in Yonkers. Okay. Who? In your afikoman bag. You didn't bring your afikoman bag? You have your Gucci purse. Put it in there. Okay. There you go. Is the afikoman piece the larger or the smaller? The larger one. Remember that the afikoman bag used to make it very small. But the idea is to try to make it as equal as possible. Okay? Equal as possible. You could bring your tape measures to make... No. You don't need a tape measure. Okay? So we've just did yachats. And now we're on the... The most important part of the Passover Seda is this... Next part, which is Magid. Magid means to tell the story. In fact, the word Hagada is based on the same root. Hagada, Magid, to tell. Okay? It's to recount or to tell. And what do we say? That those who tell more and more, Hareza Meshubach, those are the ones who are praised. The more you tell, the greater is the mitzvah, okay? And we tell the story D minor. of Passover. D minor. Now we start with um, a very interesting part of the Passover Seder that we, before we can tell the story, we have to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to hear this story and everybody has an opportunity to, to celebrate Passover. So what we do is we make a public announcement that this matzah that we're eating reminds us of what went on in Egypt. And we want anybody who's around us, come to our houses, eat. And you're supposed to take this seriously. So you're really supposed to have guests at your Passover Seder. Okay? Let's take a look at, uh, you see, you hold up the matzah. Okay, now remember, the, the, uh, the three matzahs are lifted up during the recitation. Okay, we hold them up. And look at page 11. Here we go. This is the bread of affliction. This matzah is the bread of affliction that our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are needy come and celebrate the Passover. At present, we are here. Next year, we may, be, may we be in the land of Israel. At present, we are slaves. Next year, may we all be free people. Okay, so we're really inviting people to come to our houses to celebrate with us. And it's a big mitzvah to have guests at your table. Now, in ancient times, 
and this is interesting, when you had the Paschal sacrifice, you had to have a reservation to be at the Seder, okay? Because only if you were part of the designated guests for that sheep, for that lamb, then you were allowed to eat. If you weren't invited, then you couldn't eat of that lamb, okay? So everybody had to make sure that they had a reservation to participate in a Passover Seder. And if they couldn't, if one household couldn't finish off a lamb, they would join another household together, okay? Now, again, remember that this was the audacious thing to do, that the Hebrew slaves took the lamb on the 10th day of Nisan and flaunted before the masters, before their Egyptian taskmasters, and said, we're going to slaughter your God, okay? So that's why this is so important. And by the way, this is... Um, one of very few uh, positive mitzvot that if you fail to do it, um, you're punished very severely with the punishment of excision. The other is circumcision. That if you're not circumcised, you're also uh, punished. It's a positive commandment that has a punishment with it if you fail to do it. Okay? So that's why uh, the, the Paschal sacrifice is the only sacrifice, is the only festival that has a makeup date. So if someone were in a state of ritual impurity on the first Passover, on the 14th of Nisan, he would celebrate a month later. He would be clean and he would celebrate a month later to make sure that he didn't miss the Paschal sacrifice, okay? Let's now sing uh, song number, well, we're on page 11, okay? Page 11, Polach Ma'anya, together with Cantagafa. Polach <laughs> Ma'anya Ya halu avatana, biara de mitzrayim. Halach ba anya, ya halu avatana, biara de mitzrayim. Kod ichvin yete veyechol. Called its richete virsach ha shata ha kaleshana ha ba beara de Israel ha shata avde leshana. Haba benei chori. Fifty-one years, and every year he gets better. It's unbelievable. The sweet singer of Israel. Okay, very beautiful. By the way, uh, the language that this is in is what language, Amir? Aramaic. Aramaic is a mixture of Arabic and Hebrew. Okay, and it's the language of the... Talmud, the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud is written in Aramaic, okay? This is the language that they spoke in, in Babylon. What's that? Parts of it are written in Aramaic, part of it in Hebrew, right, okay? Now, um, the next part is, again, remember that the children play a key role in the Passover Seder. And why do the children play such a key role in Passover Seder, Pizzi? Because they need to learn the story even more than that. So the, the so they can go to sleep, huh? Okay. Okay. So, no, we have uh, the covering of the matzahs, the uncovering of the matzahs. They take off the Seder plate. We have the four questions. We have the four sons, right? All things that center around the children. Why are the children so prominently featured in the Passover Seder? Linda? To make it entertaining so that they'll stay awake. But also because... They're the future. Pharaoh, they're the future, right? But, Hinda, because Pharaoh's anger and enmity was directed at the children. Remember what does Pharaoh say? He says, every male child who was born, cast them into the river. If they didn't have enough straw to make enough bricks, what would they do? They would plaster Jewish children into the wall, okay? Pharaoh, according to tradition, used to bathe in the blood of little Jewish children. Why this obsession with Jewish? Because he wanted to eliminate the future of the Jewish people. Okay? And we do just the opposite. We emphasize the role of the children on Passover night. 
And we do that with the four questions. Four questions. Manishtana. Okay? Cantor Goffin is going to... Let's just review those questions, okay? Why is this not like different from all other nights? You got that? Okay. On all other nights, we eat chametz and matzah. Chametz means what? What is chametz? How do you define chametz? Chametz means bread that has fermented, okay, or dough that has fermented. How does dough ferment? Dough ferments when? It goes more than 18 minutes. If you let it lie, okay, if you take water and you take wheat and you mix it and you let it lie for 18 minutes without kneading it, it automatically ferments and becomes chametz, okay? So in order to make chametz, you don't have to do anything. It happens automatically. It's like, in order to do not such good things, you don't have to do act. You don't have to be proactive. It happens automatically. Okay. If you don't brush your teeth, they decay. You didn't do anything, but you didn't take care of it. Okay. In order to do good, you have to be proactive. Okay. <laughs> so if you need the chal, if you need the dough, more than eighteen minutes, you can need it for two days. As long as you're needing it. It doesn't become chametz. Once you leave it for 18 minutes, it becomes chametz, okay? That becomes uh, invalid and you can't use it, okay? So all the nights of the year, we eat both chametz and matzah. Some of the things that we do have the leaven in it, so don't, don't, okay? But on this night of Passover, we eat only matzah. Why is that? Second question. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. Tonight, we specifically eat the bitter herbs. That's true, we eat other herbs, but tonight we specifically eat the moror. Third question. On all other nights, we do not dip even once. Tonight, why do we dip twice? First, we dip the vegetable, here it says potato, in the salt water, and we also eat the, we dip the, the, the moror into the harosis, okay? So we dip twice. And then on all of the nights we eat sitting or reclining. Tonight, we all recline. Why do we all recline, okay? So Kantagafen is now going to sing the Manishtana for us because he's the youngest person here. He really is. Isn't he sweet? Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the <laughs> bottom of page 11. What your record is on. Manishtana halayla haseh mikol halayla Everybody. Mikol Halelo This transliteration Shebechol Halelot Anu Ochlim Chamei Tzu Matzah Chamei Tzu Matzah Halayla Hazeh Halayla Hazeh Kula O Matzah This is an appetizer for strikes Halayla Hazeh Kula O Matzah we dip twice. Come on, lay with There goes his back. All right. Well, we skip. Marar. Oh, Marar. We did Marar. Okay. Oh, we didn't do Mara? No. Oh, we skipped the Mara. Okay, let's do the Mara. Shebechol haleilot Anu ochlim She'ayirakot She'ayirakot Halayl hazeh Halayl hazeh Maror Maror Halayl hazeh Halayl hazeh Maror Okay, so now we actually begin to give the answers. And the answer that we give to the children is Abadim Hayinu. 
The reason for all this is because we were slaves in the land of Egypt. And if it weren't for the fact that we were slaves in the land of Egypt, none of this would be happening. So let's read together uh, the middle of page 12. We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord our God took us out from there with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. Had not God taken our, out our ancestors of Egypt, then our children and our grandchildren would still be enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. And even if we were all wise and perceptive, experienced and well-versed in the Torah, it would still be our duty to tell about the exodus from Egypt. And the more one talks about the exodus, which is what I mentioned earlier, the more praise one deserves. Okay, let's sing Abadim Hayinu. And the, remember this transliteration on all these songs. Avadim Hainu Hainu Lefaro Bemitzrayim Bemitzrayim Avadim Hainu Hainu Lefaro Bemitzrayim Bemitzrayim Avadim Hainu Lefaro Bemitzrayim Avadim Hainu now we are free. Now we are free. Oh, by the way, let's just go back a couple of steps, okay? How come no one asked me why I'm dressed in white? You're supposed to be so getting the grape stain could show clearly on your... Pizza, you're getting funnier by the minute, okay? So that the grape stains can show, okay? Thank you, Pizza. Okay. Nope. This is a stain-proof kittle, okay? This is called a kittle. A kittle is a white garment that's worn usually twice a year, okay? Once on Yom Kippur, okay? And also at the Seder night. And it represents purity, but it also represents being exalted, okay? Being exalted. It's sort of like our royal, our royal clothes or like the angels, okay? The other an the question that I wanted to ask, why do we eat? The egg matzahs. Why don't we have real matzahs? So it has some flavor. Okay. What is egg matzahs? Egg matzahs is regular matzah that has some sort of a juice added to it. Sometimes it could be an apple juice. It could be egg uh, uh, whites or something like that. And the reason that we eat egg matzahs is because according to tradition, many people do not, after Purim, do not eat matzah so that they can wait with a great anticipation to eat, we eat the real matzah on Passover. So since it's uh, the, within 30 days of Passover, we're eating the egg matzah. Egg matzah is kosher for Passover, but it's not supposed to be eaten on Passover because it is a rich matzah. And matzah is known as lechem oni. It's supposed to be an impoverished bread. Because the slaves didn't have time to let it rise, okay? So it's impoverished bread. So you, you're not supposed to, though, you see, it says kosher for Passover. But if you look on the side, in the fine print, it says it should only be eaten by, by who? Children or elderly people who can't tolerate the regular matzah, okay? So this is, um, this is not, okay, for regular use on Passover. Um, that's why you have the chocolate-covered matzahs are usually egg matzahs, okay? How about spelt matzah? Spelt matzah is, uh, right, the five, okay, matzah is made out of the five different grains, okay? Wheat, barley, rye, oats, and spelt, okay? If they're made out of the five grains, then that's real matzah. People who are gluten intolerant, um, we'll generally eat the spelt matzah, okay? Now, remember, that the, even gluten intolerant people have to eat matzah on Passover night. They'll be sick for the next week, you know. <laughs> All right? But I think, I, think it is the, I think it is the spelt matzah that has the least gluten, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? Oat matzah is also... Um, I think it's a custom that we don't eat it at all on Passover unless you're infirm or... or, or. Do it cakes and all kinds of no, no. Oh, yeah, but that's not matzah, okay? So we do have 
Um, we do have juice put into cakes and stuff like that, so we do eat that, okay? But um, the matzah, we try to keep uh, real pure, and we maintain our purity with, pot, with matzah, okay? Now, the next step is, we, right, we're telling the answer to the four questions, that we were slaves in the land of Egypt, and now we talk about the four children, okay? The four children. Now, it says four sons, but banim could also mean daughters as well. Ben Ubat, okay? The plural for children is Banim. And we speak about uh, the wise child and the wicked child and the innocent child and the one who doesn't know how to ask. Why are we missing a fifth one, the one that returns? Well, the fifth one, right, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says the fifth one is the child who's not at the Seder. That's the one that we should really be concerned about, okay? These children, you know, they might have uh, mixed feelings about the whole thing, but at least they're there. What about the children who are not there, okay? And that's the ones that we're really concerned about, all right? So, um, let's read the four sons, okay? Um, well, we don't have the text of the four sons here, but we do have on page 13, Baruch HaMakom, okay? Here we go, all right? So let's sing together. Blessed be the omnipresent, blessed be he, blessed be God who gave us the Torah to his people, Israel, blessed be he. The Torah speaks of the four children, the wise one, the wicked one, the simple one, and the one who's not able to ask. Go ahead. Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu. Baruch Shenatan, Natan Torah, Shenatan Torah, Le'amo Yisrael, Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu. Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shenatan Torah, Shenatan Torah, Le'amo Yisrael, Baruch Hu. Okay, so let's hear what these children have to say. The wise son asks, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, the laws that the Lord our God has commanded you. In other words, he's asking an intellectual question. He wants to know what the reason is behind everything. And explain to this child all the laws of Passover, the Paschal offering, even including that no dessert may be eaten after the Paschal sacrifice. And that's why after we eat the Afikoman, which represents the Paschal sacrifice, you're not allowed to eat anything. And what about the rebellious child, he asks. What does this service mean to you? Okay. And the child says to you, and not to himself, right? He excludes everybody. By excluding himself from the community, he denies the basic principles of Judaism. Tell him bluntly, this is done on account of what the Lord did for us when we came out of Egypt. For me, and not for him, had he been there, he would not have been redeemed. That's a pretty tough answer, right? Pretty tough answer, all right? And then the simple child asks, what is all this about? Tell the child, with a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. As for the child who is unable to ask the question, and remember, this is the only child that doesn't ask a question. Now, notice what it says. You'll see the language. You must open up the subject as it is written, and you shall tell your child on that day, we do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This is the only child who doesn't ask, okay? The Higadata Levincha Bayomahu Lemor. The Higadata is the language of Haggadah, okay? So really, the whole purpose of the Passover Seder is to tell the story even if nobody asks, even if nobody asks, that you're supposed to be stimulated to. There's a question here. There's a question here. It's Not necessarily. He doesn't, yeah. It's a very important. It says over in the second child, he mentions the concept you. Do you notice the first child also says you? Why doesn't he say commanded us? All right, because he does it in a brazen way, okay? He does it in a brazen way. And he says, you know, uh, what do you need all this for? Who needs this Passover Seder? That's the way they read it, okay? Now, I have a second, a, a different opinion on this. In fact, you know, I'm sort of like surprised 
because in the Bible, the Bible doesn't give such a strong answer, okay? The author of the Haggadah felt that he had to give a strong answer because he had to make sure that there was a variety of children here. Actually, what happens in the Bible is quite different. The Bible says, It doesn't say he asks. It says, and it will come to pass when your children say to you. That's not asking. Why are you doing these rituals? Now, that's a question. But what it's implying is that every Jewish child should ask these questions. You see that, Graham? A Jewish child who doesn't ask questions is not a thinking child, okay? A person who doesn't ask questions is not a person who's going to grow intellectually. And that's why it's so important that we ask questions. Questions are the lifeline of Judaism, okay? In Yiddish, we say, for akasha starpmanish, you don't die from questions. In fact, all of Judaism is one big question, right? The Talmud is one question after the next. So it's a good thing that your children ask these questions, and if he doesn't ask these questions, then there's something wrong with him. Because you want to stimulate these questions. And then, in the Bible, it says, Vamartem zevach pesach hulashem. Strange answer. It says, you should tell this child, who wants to know what this is all about, that it's a Paschal sacrifice. We're having a celebration of Passover. What does that mean, having a celebration of Passover? He's saying, this kid has existential questions about whether he should be Jewish, whether he should be involved in Judaism, whether he should be religious, what do I need the rituals for, what do I have to put on tefillin, what do I have to keep a kosher home, what do I have to keep Shabbos? And you know what they say? Don't start philosophizing with him. You know what to do? Tell him that it's a celebratory Passover meal. Bring him to the Seder. Give him four cups of wine. Loosen him up. Have a great meal. Let him have a great time. Positive, joyous, Jewish experiences. That's the key. You hear that? Alejandro. Positive, joyous Jewish experience. Bring him to the Seder. And then when the time comes, when he's ready, this is called readiness in education, when he's ready to hear the answer. He's not ready to hear the answer. When he's ready to answer, when he's drunk four cups of wine, he's had a great meal, man, then you can start talking to him. And that's, I think, a much better answer than the Haggadah gives. I, I apologize for that, but okay. Here we go. Now... If you see the extra sheet that they put in your Haggadah, okay, a note from Egypt that this is very important. We left it out of the original one, but this is really the story of Egypt, that we have to tell that our ancestors were lost uh, down, you know, uh, Ab uh, Abraham was an Aramean who sought, uh, well, or, or uh, uh, Laban was an Aramean who sought to destroy my father. And then the Egyptians made us into evil people and we cried out to God and God took us out with an outstretched hand. It's very important to say that part and don't leave that out, okay? So when you have your, use this Haggadah at your Seder, uh, make sure that you point it out. And the story of Passover continues. Now we get to page 18. Of course, we're skipping a lot, okay? <coughs> but otherwise we'd be here all night. Now we remember a sort of like a shortcut, a shorthand a way of identifying the ten plagues. And we can subsume them into three plagues. Dum, fire, ash, I'm sorry, dum, blood, ash, fire, timrod, asham, columns of smoke. And what we do, right, you're supposed to have fill up your second cup of wine. Fill up your second cup. Buh, 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 buh. All right. Make sure you clean your pinky. All right. Pinkies, everybody. I think there's a, there's a manicure called Pinky, right, isn't there? <laughs> pinky, okay. All right. And we dip our fingers into the wine, and we take off a drop of wine because our enemies suffered, so we can't rejoice. When your enemy falters, don't rejoice. Everybody, stick your finger into the wine as we say the three Shortcuts to the ten plagues. Daham. Blood. Vaish. Fire. Vitim rotashan. Columns of smoke. And now the ten plagues. In each one of the ten plagues, we take off a drop of wine, okay? Here we go. Daham. Blood. Svardeya. Frogs. Kinim. Lice. A rove, wild animals, dever, pestilence, shechin, boils, 
Barad, Hail, Arbe, Locusts, Choshech, Darkness, Makat Bechorong. Now it says that Rabbi Judah used to give an acronym for them, an abbreviated way of remembering them. And that is, again, stick your fingers in, Tetzahach, Adahash, Be'achahav. And that's the first letter of the ten plagues. You see that? Dumb, Tzvardei Akinim Arov. Okay? Now, if you, you're you not supposed to lick your finger. You know that you're not supposed to. Don't lick your finger. Mm. Don't lick your finger, okay? And you're supposed to spill it on the Haggadah if, you, if you're... If your Haggadah is not wine stained, then you haven't have really had a, a a seder. Okay. And now we get yeah, Miriam. We did say the oh, we didn't do shisha. Did we skip it? Oh no, we got to go back to the Shamda, Okay. What page is it? Here we are, page fifteen. Okay. Sorry, the Shamda, very beautiful. Okay. The Shamda comes in the part of the Seder known as Magid, Magid, okay, Magid, which means to recall. And during this, we, uh, we, uh, uh, the matzahs should be covered and the cups of wine raised, okay? So we lift our cups and we say beautifully. Let's read together. Um, at this, and this promise, this promise, this covenant that we have with God, okay, has stood by our ancestors and us. For not just one enemy has risen against us to annihilate us, but in every generation our enemies rise up against us. But the Holy One, blessed be He, saves us from their hand. Uh, it, this is just so telling. This is like Jew, Jewish history in a nutshell, that in every generation they rise up. You would think, you would think, that after the Holocaust, the world would just leave us alone, okay? These poor Jews, they lost six million. They're downtrodden, they're broken, they're this, you know. Leave them alone. Anechtik and tug. How do you translate anechtik and tug? You know, forget it, okay? It just doesn't happen. They're out to get us, okay? <laughs> and we have to respond by saying, Mir velnze ibeleben. We're gonna outlive them all. We're gonna outlive them all, okay? And what happened to all those who oppressed us? What happened to the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians? Persians, they're gone. Okay? We're still here. We're here. A little shaky, but we're here. Okay. <laughs> all right, so now for Miriam, we're going to sing the Hishiam, the Cantor Sherwood Goffin, the sweet singer of Israel. What key, Cantor Goffin? E minor. E minor. Are you e minor. an E minor, Miriam? All right, E minor. Are you an E minor? E minor. Vehi sheam da, vehi sheam da. Supposed to hold your cups up. The covenant has saved us. Vehi sheam da, vehi sheam da. She's drinking already. Shelo echad bilvad Amadaleinu lechaloteinu Shelo echad bilvad Amadaleinu lechaloteinu El Hashem Chador Vador Om Dimaleinu lechaloteinu El Hashem Chador Vador Om Dimaleinu lechaloteinu Ve'akadosh baruchu Masileinu mi'adam Ve'akadosh baruchu all right. That was beautiful, Cantor. And thank you for saving us. We would have skipped that by mistake, okay? Page 22, everybody, okay? And now we remember the very famous song, the Dayenu song. Dayenu means it would have been enough, right? It would have been enough. If God had just taken this out of Egypt, it would have been enough. But what did he do? He executed judgments against the Egyptians and their gods. Had he just executed the judgments against their gods, it would have been enough. And not put their firstborns to death, it would have been enough. Had he put their firstborn to death, not uh, given us their wealth, that would have been enough. 
Had he given us that wealth and not split the sea, would have been enough. Had he not said he split the sea and not let us through to the dry land, that would have been enough. Had he led us through the dry land and not sunk our foes in the sea, that would have been enough. And it goes on and on and on until, had he brought us to Mount Sinai and not given us the Torah, oh my God, that wouldn't have been enough. Okay, had he not had he given us the Torah and not brought us into the land of Israel, that would have been, would have been enough. Had he brought us into the land of Israel and not built the temple, it would have been enough. Dayenu. Let's sing on the top of page tw mean? 23. Dayenu means... No, 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 no. The uh, given us their wealth. I haven't heard that before. Oh, when... Okay. The, the covenant between the pieces that God made with Abraham 400 years before the Exodus, okay? It said it had three parts to it. And one was that we were going to be exiled, we were going to be enslaved, and we were going to be persecuted. And it had an extra part that we were going to get out, we were going to be liberated, and we would leave with great wealth. After all, we served as slaves for 200 years. We're entitled to be paid. And not only that, but we had to leave our homes behind and stuff like that. So we got paid. And what happened was that the Egyptians, or the Jews at the end, found favor in the eyes of the Egyptians so that the Egyptians were showering them with gifts. And Moses was considered a very noble person in all of Egypt. And the people were just too happy to get rid of them, right? After the ten plagues, they were very happy to get rid of them. So that's what it means. He gave us their wealth, okay? And we emptied out Egypt. <coughs> Let's sing on the top of page 22, there's transliteration. <coughs> what key, Cantor? F. It's an F. Oh, uh, no, I said D, right? Then I said D. Yeah, D, I we're changing it to D. He <coughs> He lo hotsian no mi mitzrayim. He lo hotsian no mi mitzrayim. He lo hotsi hotsian no hotsian no mi mitzrayim mi mitzrayim hotsian no dayeh again. He lo hotsi hotsian no hotsian no mi mitzrayim mi mitzrayim hotsian no dayeh. Die, die, no, die, die, no, die, 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 no, die, no, die, no, die, die, no, 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 Hey, Ilu asavem shifatim lo asave lo hey dayenu. Ilu asave lo hey lo haraget bechoreim dayenu. Ilu haraget bechoreim and on that and lo et men lo nam dayenu. Die dayenu, die dayenu, die dayenu, 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 die dayenu. No free lunch. Die dayenu, die dayenu. First time off Broadway, ladies and gentlemen. No spectators, no spectators. Die, 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 this poor guy, he just walked into the room. He'll never be back again. Oh, you're Michael Silverberg. Sit down. 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 Sit
They barely sing. I don't understand. It's because of this grape juice. You got to bring out the real stuff, okay? All right. All right. So we're now on page 20, 24, okay? 24. And now we get to the various essences of the Passover Seder. And the Haggadah says, Rabbi Gamliel used to say, anyone? Are you on page 24? Are you with me? Anyone? Give the poor guy a Haggadah. Give him a Haggadah. Well, no, give me a, a Chaviva. Do we have an extra Agata here? We got. It's in Japanese, but um, how's your Japanese, Michael? No, yet, no, a little rusty, huh? We have a crash course in Japanese. Just call 1 800 44 Japanese. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ram Gamliel used to say anyone who has not discussed the meaning of these three things, the essences of the. Of the of the Haggadah on Passover has not fulfilled his duty. Namely, Pesach. What's the Pesach? Pesach is the Paschal offering, okay? The matzah and the marar, the bitter herbs, okay? So first of all, we uncover the matzah, we lift up our matzahs. Ooh, look, someone is crushed by matzahs. Terrible. Okay, we have matzah meal. Anybody? We're going to have a sale on it. Okay, all right? Now, look at this. Why did our ancestors eat Paschal offering during... Wait, this is Pesach. We're wrong. What am I eating matzah? Okay, we lift up the shank bone, right? Here we go. Why did the ancestors eat the Paschal offering? During the period of the temple, it is because the Holy One, blessed be He, passed over the houses of our ancestors in Egypt, as is written. You shall say, it is the Passover offering for God who passed over the houses of the children of Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and spared our houses. The people knelt and bowed down. Now, Graham, did you go to Harvard? You went to Harvard. You went to Oxford, too? Uh, the London School of Economics. The London School of Economics. So you have all these advanced degrees. I mean, it's disgusting, right? And you were star on Broadway and everything, right? Okay, I want to ask you a question. What's the name of the holiday that we are celebrating now? Uh, Pesach. That's good. Pesach. What does Pesach mean? Passover. To Passover. Passover means what? We just read it here, okay? That God uh, passed over the houses of passed over the houses of the Egypt of the Jews, right, that had the blood on the doors so that he wouldn't strike them with the death of the firstborn, correct? That's why we call it Passover. But do you remember the story of when Jacob came down with his 70 family members to Egypt and he was concerned that there would be assimilation? <coughs> and Joseph told him, don't worry, Dad, there's not going to be assimilation. Why? Because you're going to move to where? Where are you going to move? Huh? To who? To Borough Park, to Williamsburg, to Muncie. You're going to move to an entirely Jewish neighborhood called Goshen. You're going to live in Goshen. All the Jews are going to live in Goshen. It's the finest land with past pastures, right? Don't worry, Dad. There won't be any assimilation because you're going to live in a ghetto. So what's the question? Why would it be necessary? For, what would it be necessary for God to... If everybody lived in the same neighborhood, why does God have to jump over the houses? What does that mean? No, there was, there was a pure Jewish neighborhood. What happened? What happened after a couple of years? Remember, it was Times Square. That's right. Okay, they started moving to the fancy neighborhoods, the suburbs, and the fancy homes, and the doorman, and the, you know, the co-ops, okay? So eventually, the Jews did assimilate. And not only that, but what do they say? The Jews reached the 49th level of assimilation. 49th level of impurity. One more level, and it would have been lights out, okay? And just at the last moment, God saved them. So here we see that the whole celebration is not only that God just saved us from the enslavement, but God slave, saved us from assimilation. It was, we were gone. We were gone. Now, according to tradition, 
the assimilation came because the, the challenges of Egypt were just too great for the Jewish people to bear. Now, originally, the Jews were just good citizens, and the Egyptians called on them, why don't you just build these beautiful cities of Pitom and Ramses, the store cities, and out of their civic aspirations, they volunteered. They saw how good they were. Then they made them slaves. They enslaved them eventually into the work, okay? But the Jews originally volunteered, and they were very prominent citizens. And what happened even in the slavery, according to tradition, every night after the work in the slave fields, right, with the beating of the Jews by the Egyptian taskmasters, the slave owners used to invite their slaves to come have a night activity with them. And they used to go out to the Colosseums where the gladiators used to fight. And they used to fight each other and they used to fight the animals. By the end of the night, the pit of the Colosseum was filled with dead human beings and dead animals. And everybody was completely stoned, drunk, drunk. And the Egyptians used to invite their Jewish partners to go down to the center of the Colosseum and eat the flesh of the human beings oh. and the animals. This is the Medrash because that's explaining how could the Jewish people reach the 49th level of impurity because the blandishments were so great. It's very, very hard to resist those temptations as you can see in our society as well. In our society as well. Okay, so that's the story of Passover. Why did he have to jump over the houses? Because the Jews were completely, completely assimilated. No questions. No, I'm Pharaoh. You keep quiet. Hey. Rebellions. What? Every slave group history had rebellions. There were rebellions. about Jewish rebellions. There were rebellions, and according to tradition, there was the tribe of Ephraim that wanted out of Egypt, and they tried to fly the coop, and they were killed by the Egyptians. The tribe, most of the tribe of Ephraim was killed, according to tradition. And then, of course, you have the tradition that it says that the Jews went out hamushim, which means armed. When they went out of Egypt, they went out, but it also means a fifth. Only one-fifth of the Jewish people made it out of Egypt. The rest of them assimilated. Okay. Okay. Everybody knows Dr. Ira Weinstock? He's a professor of of, uh, of, of uh, p politics, political, political science, science, political science at Turo College, the most popular professor. Nuts as they come, but he's the best professor. Okay, here we go. Top of page 25. I don't want to embarrass him publicly. Okay, here we go. All right. Page 25. Matzah. Okay, why do we have this matzah? Because the Egyptians, the Jews were in a rush to get out of Egypt and they're Dough did not have time to rise. So that's why we have matzah. And they put the matzah on their shoulders and they marched out. Marar. Why do we have this marar? Why do we have this bitter herb? Because the Egyptians embittered the lives of the, of the ancestors in Egypt, as is written. And they made the life bitter for them and with hard labor. And they, the, with clay and bricks. According to tradition, they gave men women's jobs and women men's jobs. Today, everybody vies for that, right? So it's interesting that that's what was made. That's how they... That was the work that was considered backbreaking. Okay, now very beautiful, Behold Dor Vador. We don't have the Hebrew text here, but the cantor's going to sing it anyway, okay? Behold Dor Vador on page 26. In every generation, every person's duty is to regard himself and herself as if he, she personally had come out of Egypt, as it is written, you shall tell your son on that day. That is an account of what God did for us, for me, when we came out of Egypt, it was not only our ancestors whom the Holy One redeemed from slavery, uh, we were redeemed as well. So every person is supposed to consider at the Seder table as if you were redeemed. Okay? So it's not just, oh, we remember, you know, the slaves. We were slaves, and we still are slaves, and we need redemption as well. Okay? Cantor Gotham. <laughs> Chayav Adam Lirot Lirot Et atzmo Keilu Keilu Yatsah 
Mitzrayim. Sing with the cantor. Bechol dor vador. Bechol dor vador. Chayav hadam. Tashir, tashir. Liro. Liro te tatzmo. Say it. Liro te tatzmo. Keilu. Keilu hu yatsa mi Mitzrayim. In every generation, every person must see himself. Ladies and gentlemen, is that a canter or is that a canter? Does everybody know how Cantor Goffin got his first name? His name is Sherwood, right? Sherwood. He was born in New Haven. When he was born, the doctor asked his mother, Mrs. Goffin, would you like your son to be a cantor? And she answered back, I sure would. <laughs> I sure would. I think that's the 450th time you said that. <laughs> all right, all right, what can I tell you? All right. You heard it? I heard it too, okay. So now we sing the Hallel song, some of the beautiful Hallel songs. We'll just sing, um, do the uh, Malecha Hayam. Page 27, the middle of the middle of the translation, literation. Malecha Hayam. Everybody together. Malecha Hayam. Kitanu. Kitanu. It's the middle of the Hebrew. Hayarden. Hayarden. Tisov liyachol. Tisov liyachol. Eharim. Eharim. The hills. Tir keduchiel. They danced like lamb, like rams. Give on. The mountains. When the sea split, the whole world. Reacted. Like sheep, give Nate's own. Me live in Adon. Holy Adonets. Me live in The whole natural world reacted to the splitting of the Red Sea. It was such a momentous occasion. And with Cantor Goffin singing, I could understand how the whole world jumped, danced and sang, okay? Top of page 28. We've now reached the second cup of wine, okay? The second cup of wine. Make sure that you put back those extra drops that you took out with your fingers, okay? So you have to fill it up again. Make sure it's full. And we say the very, very beautiful blessing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has redeemed us. And our ancestors from Egypt that enabled us to reach this night so that we may eat matzah and moror. So, Lord our God and God of our ancestors, enable us to reach also the forthcoming holidays and festivals and peace, rejoicing in the rebuilding of Zion, your city. You know, we think that this is such a preposterous thing to ever believe that there's going to be a third temple. Well, it was preposterous for 2,000 years that we would be restored to the land of Israel. And we're there, okay? And joyful in your service. There we shall partake of the offering. We're going to rebuild that temple and we're going to sacrifice the Paschal offering and the Passover sacrifices. And see, on Saturday night, they say it a little differently, which will be acceptable uh, a place in your altar. We shall sing a new hymn of praise to you and for our redemption and for our liberation Blessed art you, O Lord, who has redeemed Israel. Venomar lefanav. Is that in here? Yes. Venodelechashir. I'll go. It's not here. Okay. Okay. We're going to sing that later. And now, 
But remember, we sit down and we lean to the left and we make the blessing. Okay, we don't have to say the real blessing because we already made the blessing. Lean to your left. Let's go, Mike. You got to fill up your cup. No cup? All right, here we go. Baruch Ata Adonai Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Borei Pidi You know why Cantor Goffin likes this holiday? His name is mentioned again and again. Goffin, 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 Goffin. It's unbelievable. How many better, My father was named High Goffin. So he didn't allow anyone to say the blessing without permission. Or a pre high goffin. Oh, high goffin. Okay. <laughs> That's worse than sure would. Okay. And now we wash our hands ritually. Okay, Graham. You're going to wash my hands ritually, right? Okay. This is the real washing of the hands. Okay, good. Good. And we make the blessing. Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam. Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav Tzivanu Al Natilat Yadayim. Now remember when you wash your hands, you have to get all parts of your hands. If you can't do it with one cup, you do it with the second cup, okay? And then the other hand, okay? Both sides in and out. And while you're wiping, you make the blessing. And then you don't, you're not allowed to talk until you eat the matzah, okay? So here we are, we've just washed our hands. And remember, there are two blessings for the matzah. There's the Motzi Lechem and Aretz, the normal blessing for bread. This is considered bread, okay? And then the special blessing for matzah. And remember what we said. You have to eat two olives size of matzah. Two olive size of matzah. So what did we say? We said that with a machine matzah, it's about two-thirds or three-quarters of a machine matzah. Double that, okay? So that means that you have to take out of the box and supplement it. With a handmade matzah, it's about one handmade matzah that you have to eat. And you sit there for about nine minutes and um, you jump and jump, 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 jump. And of course, you know, uh, your stomach starts groaning, etc., etc. Okay, so here we go. We're not going to make tamotzi, okay, but we're going to just reattach my microphone here. Sorry, guys. All right. All right, I think I got it. All right. Okay, so what we do is as follows. We say the first blessing. Baruch, well, we lift up all three matzahs. Baruch, ata, Hashem, Elokeinu, Melech, Olam. Motzi, Lecha, Minaretz, right? Then you put down the lower matzah and you keep up the top two. The top two, okay? Baruch, ata, Hashem, Elokeinu, Melech, Olam. Asher, Kiddushanu, God who has sanctified us. With his commandments and commanded us, Al Achilat Matzah. And then you take the matzah and you start jumping away, okay? That's when you, you and you lean to your left and you, it should take about, uh, I would say, seven, eight, nine minutes to chomp the matzah, okay? It's, remember, it's like uh, three quarters of a matzah or a half of a, a, a full machine matzah, a full hand matzah, full hand matzah. Yeah, okay, so we've now eaten the matzah, okay? We've eaten the matzah, and the next thing we're supposed to do is the maror, okay? Now, the way we eat maror is you take some of the romaine lettuce. Romaine lettuce is considered maror because the stem is very bitter. And even though we don't eat the stem, the root, the, 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 the leaf is considered maror, and you can eat as much as possible, okay? And you... Dip it into the haroset. Dip it into the haroset. Or you put some of the maror in, okay? You take a fork, okay? The real horseradish. And you put it in. Oh, my God. And don't forget, you shake off the haroses, okay? And you're supposed to eat a very big size of leaf, okay? We Jews take this, re this religion very seriously. You don't want to mess around. Not only that, you're supposed to cough and you're supposed to choke on the moror, okay? Right? That's why we have the emergency room med uh, doctor here, okay? Uh, Victoria's here. She's now here. Anybody who wants to choke, we're ready to choke. Okay, here we go. Now, remember, 
We don't make the blessing over the vegetable because we did that when? When did we do that? Karpas. Thank God Miriam is here, okay? We did it at Karpas. And the only thing we're going to make is the blessing over maror, over the bitter herb, okay? And you don't lean to your left because it's considered unwise, okay? So we're not going to really say the blessing. We'll say the, we won't say the name of God. Baruch Atah Hashem. Elokeinu melech olam asher kidishanu v'mitzotav v'tzivanu alachilat maror. God save me. Oh. Oh. Whoa! The horseradish is strong. And now, you take the bottom matzah and you make a sandwich. You put in maror, the romaine lettuce, and a little charosis, shake it off. And you did what Hillel used to do. You see, it's a terrible thing. They just don't give the Jews credit. It's true that we won a lot of Nobel Prizes for all the wonderful things that we did. But one of the terrible injustices done to us is that they call the sandwich a sandwich after Lord Sandwich. It should really be called a Hillovich. Because Hillel was the first to invent the sandwich. He used to take matzah, maror, and a little bit of the lamb from the Paschal sacrifice. And he used to say, as you see on page 32, 32, you see that? In commemoration of the temple, we do as Hillel did in the temple times. He combined the Passover offering, matzah and marar, in a sandwich, and he ate them together to fulfill that which is written in the Torah. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, okay? Now, with, when it's, you're eating the marar with a sandwich, you're allowed to lean, you have to lean to your left, okay? You're supposed to lean to your left, okay? Because it's mitigated by the other things in it. Korach means to uh, wrap, to wrap, okay, to package together, korech, to wrap around, okay? Then you have the Birkat Amazon. Wait, before we have the Birkat Amazon, we almost skipped the Afikoman. So, whoa, who stole my Afikoman? Oh, no one stole my Afikoman. You're a bunch of wimps, I'll tell you. I don't believe it. No one stole my Afikoman. Here's my Afikoman. As my grandchildren get bigger and bigger, they're demanding uh, bigger and bigger things. Unbelievable. I had to build a trampoline when I was in uh, Houston last week to build a trampoline. My, my granddaughter, who's only two years old, she invited me over for Thanksgiving. And she said, uh, Saba, you bought me a new kitchen. A new kitchen. Could you assemble it? Six hours later and 2,000 pieces later. I didn't have any turkey, nothing, okay? Okay, so that's uh, really what we do these days, okay? So here is the afikoman. We take the afikoman out. Now, again, one of the reasons that we have the afikoman is to keep the children alert and awake. We also teach them to be criminals, okay? To steal it and to hold it for ransom. It's a terrible thing, anyway. But the kids love it. And I remember when I was a little kid, what did you get for an afikoman present in New Haven? Uh, I got uh, Lego. You got a, it wasn't Lego in those Lego. days. Get out of here. You're, you're over 70. Lincoln Logs. Oh, Lincoln Logs. Now you're talking, Lincoln Logs. <laughs> An erector set, right? <laughs> erector set. Lionel, Lionel Trades. You got $5? Yeah, you know what I got? I got a slinky. Anybody remember what a slinky oh, yeah. is? Slinky is? Yeah, it used to go up and down. Yeah. Today, they asked for a Lamborghini. It's like crazy. It's unbelievable. Okay. And they get it. Uh, yeah. Well, if I had a grandmother like Hilda, are you kidding? Oh, yeah. All right, anyway. So now we eat the afikoman, and the same thing. You're supposed to eat approximately a half of a, of a handmade matzah and about two-thirds of a machine-made matzah, and you lean on your left side. It should take about four or five minutes, and uh, this is the last thing that you're allowed to eat. You can have water and the wine, but otherwise the seder is over. Okay, so we're now, we've now say the Birkat Amazon, which is the grace over the meal, and you fill up a 
third cup because the third cup is the blessing for the benching, for the grace after the meal. And we also finished the Hallel that we began before. And now we're on page 40. You see how much fun we're having when, uh, you know, things are going fast, okay? And we fill up the third cup of wine and we raise it up. We say the blessing, <laughs> Baruch Cantor. Baruch Atad Hashem. Elokeinu melech haolam. Borei pri Ah, uh, lean to your left, lean to your left. You're going to burn, you're not leaning to your left. All right. Uh, all right. And then the cup of Elijah. Okay, this is the cup of Elijah. We're not going to fill it up, but uh, that's the cup of Elijah. Okay, he's uh, a poor Elijah. He goes around from Seder to Seder drinking a little bit. By the end of the night, he's really... You know, my father used to tell the following story that there was a little old lady in Europe who used to make a seder all alone. She was a widow, you know. And in the backyard, of course, she had some farm animals, you know, there. And uh, she's already had uh, three cups of wine. And she's a little fashnyoshkit. Do you know what fashnyoshkit means? Okay. A little bit inebriated, right? And she opens up the door for Elijah the prophet. And in the, in the house, it's filled with uh, candles and lights. And the goat, the billy goat from the backyard, sees the lights. And he starts jumping in and he jumps on the table and the billy goat has a beard right so the little old lady says elijah elijah eat drink don't break the dishes she thinks it's elijah right because okay <laughs> anyway it's funny when you tell it in yiddish all right so here we go now what happens is we open up the door for elijah the prophet to show our faith in god that we're not afraid of anything and anyone trouble is is that historically Graham it was a very dangerous time for the Jewish people Passover Seder and Passover was a very dangerous time remember the blood libels began with the Passover Seder and it became forbidden to allow anybody but an Orthodox Jew to touch a bottle of wine because they used to say that we killed Jew non-Jewish kids and fill them their 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 our bottles with wine Became very, and you know, they knew everybody was together on Passover night, and they used to round them up for uh, beatings or worse, or burnings. They used to burn down the houses. It was a terrible night. And that's why we have to show our faith. So, if you take a look on page 41. Pour out your wrath. This is a verse from Psalms, okay? We say to God, pour out your wrath upon the heathen nations who do not recognize you, and upon the sinful kingdom that does not invoke your name for they have devoured Jacob and destroyed his dwelling place, the temple. Pour out your anger upon them and let your fiery wrath overtake them. Pursue them in indignation and annihilate them from beneath the heavens of the Lord. Where are those glasses? Where are the, I need those glasses. I can't read anymore. I'm so drunk. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. Cantagoffin is going to sing Shvo We don't sing it. We don't sing it? We sing Eliyahu Anavi. Okay, we'll sing Eliyahu Anavi. Okay. Be minor. Be minor. <laughs> <laughs> Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Agiladi, Bimera Viamenu, Yabo Eleidu, Imashiach Ben David. Imashiach ben David. Amir, what is Eliyahu doing at our Seder? Who invited him? What's he doing here? One reason why Elijah's at the, at the at Seder. What's he doing here? Who knows? Graham, Harvard, London School of Economics. I don't want to embarrass you, but okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. PT, you've been. This is your fifteenth model Seder. You should know it by now. 
What is Elijah doing at our Seder? Who invited him? Okay, one answer has to do with the cups of wine. What is the cups of wine? Amir, the cups of wine. Why do we have four cups of wine, Miriam? Um, <clears throat> languages of redemption. Four languages of redemption. God in the Bible says, I will take you out, I will redeem you, I will save you, and I will redeem you, okay? Four languages of redemption. There is a fifth language of redemption. Hey, Veti, I will bring you into the land. So we have four cups of wine for the four languages of redemption. But there's a fifth language of redemption. So we really should have five cups of wine. Why don't we have a fifth cup of wine? Sasha. No, why don't we have a fifth cup of wine? Because we're in exile. We haven't been brought back to Israel yet. Okay, we're not all in Israel. So we're saving that. So we have a fifth cup, but it's set aside for Elijah. Why? Because in the Talmud, Amir, when you study Talmud, Amir, if there is any question that is unresolved in the Talmud, who's going to resolve it? Eliyahu. Elijah the prophet is going to resolve all the questions in the end of days in the Talmud. Okay? Teku. Teku. Tishbi itareitz kushiotu bayot. Tishbi, Elijah is going to answer all the questions. So we have a question. Should we have four cups of wine or five cups of wine? We don't know the answer. So we call the cup the cup of Elijah, the unresolved cup. So that's one reason that Elijah comes to our Seder. Another reason that Elijah comes to our Seder, Maya, is because Elijah was a zealot. He was a fanatic. He took on Jezebel, the wicked Jezebel, who killed everybody, smashed as Jezebel. Remember Jezebel? Okay, Jezebel, okay? The horrible queen who murdered everybody. And he, because Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel had outlawed circumcision. And he stood up to Jezebel and he says, we're going to circumcise our children and defy you. And he stood up to them and insisted that there's going to be circumcision. And that's why Elijah is not only invited to every Seder, but he's also invited to every bris, every, bris, every circumcision. Remember, they have the seed of Elijah, okay, the chair of Elijah. Because he was a fierce zealot. He stood up and said, we're not going to be intimidated by the likes of you. And he stood up to the prophets of the Baal, and he defied them, and he won. Okay, so that's why Elijah is here. All right. Going on to, let's sing song page 42 from the Hallel song. Hashem Yivarcheinu. Okay? We're on page 42, the bottom paragraph. Okay, Michael, you have to sing. You know this. Defragish. Okay, what is that? Defragish? Defragish. Yivarech has beit Yisrael. You you are right. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Close. No cigar. Okay. Very beautiful, cousin. Okay, beautiful. We're going to send them all back to um, Hebrew school, okay? <laughs> all right. Let's do one. You remember the Shabbat Shiflani? You remember that one? That's, that's, that's your song. Shif, yeah. That's your song. That's yours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to skip that then, okay? <laughs> what we do is this Hodu Lashem, Hodu Lashem, okay? And now the fourth cup of wine is found on page 47. We fill up the cup again. I like this wine, huh? 
All right. <laughs> All right, and uh, we we lean to the left. Here we go, the fourth blessing. We're ready to sing the fourth cup of wine. Baruch atah Hashem alokeinu melech olam Borei piri agafen This guy Goffin, he's, he's again in the... Now we say the... We say the abridged... Um, a grace for meal over the wine, and then we sing Chasal Sud Pesach. This is a very famous song. You know how it became famous? Cantor Sherwood Goffin made it famous. What year was that? 1922? What year was that? 50 years later. Fifth, 1972? That was in your first album? First album. That was 72? First commercial album. The first commercial album. If you don't have it, it's been released. Okay, it's in digital now. Okay, everybody can get it. On Sherwood.goffin.com, uh, uh, Apple. Uh, okay, yeah, mostly okay. Mostly music. That mostly music. Okay, Sherwood Goffin only costs fifty dollars. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go for one song. Page forty-eight. Forty-eight. Chasal Sidu Pesach. The Seder is now over with all its ordinances and statutes. Just as we were privileged to arrange it tonight, so we be granted to perform it again. O oh, pure one God who dwells in the heights above, establish us as a people numerous beyond counting once again. Speedily guide the offshoots of your planting Israel and redeem people to the land of Zion with song. Cantor, why didn't you tell me to put on my glasses earlier? Now I can read. Okay. Okay, here we go. Chasal, 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 sidu pesach, keil chato. If you don't know it, kichol, fake it. Kichol, Here we go. Kichol, mishpato, vechukato. Kasher, kasher, zachinu, sadeoto. Ken, ken, ken. famous Cantor Sherwood Gotham. 1972. He was uh, 13 then. Okay. <laughs> and now we sing as we sing in every every year at the Seder, Lashana Hababi Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Whichever you want to do, Cantor. I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. I'm from the Bronx. I can <laughs> sing any song. G. G. Lishana haba, lishana haba, lishana haba, birusha. Lishana haba, lishana haba, lishana haba, lirusha. The lishana haba, bimshalayim habduya. Lishana haba, bimshalayim habduya. Lishana haba. Yerushalayim Hamduya, Shana Haba. Yerushalayim Hamduya, the Shana Haba, the Shana Haba, Shana Haba. Yerushalayim, Shana Haba, the Shana Haba, Shana Haba. He thinks it's a Western dance, you know. Shana Haba, Yerushalayim Hamduya. Lishana haba, bin 
Shalayim Havnu Ya Once more Alishana Hava Biru Shalayim Havnu Ya Alishana Hava Biru Shalayim Havnu Ya That was beautiful, Cantor. Really beautiful, okay? Now, there are a whole bunch of songs. If you see, on the second night, the first night we sing, and it was exactly at midnight because so many miraculous things occurred at midnight. The ten plagues occurred at midnight. The exodus was exactly at midnight. Um, Abraham was visited by God at midnight. All these things happened at midnight. Um, the, the miracle of Haman occurred at midnight. And then on the second night, we speak about the sa Paschal sacrifice. Turn to page 15 now. It is fitting to, to sing praises to God. Ah, dear Bim Lucha. Let's do one, one per paragraph of that, okay? Okay. <clears throat> you pick it. All right, and now page 51, a very popular song, Ah, dear who? There's a traditional melody, and then there is the Shlomo Kalbach melody. So first, let's do the traditional one. The traditional melody comes from Amsterdam, Holland, 1636. 1636. Do you know that Sherwood Goffin is a professor of music at the Bell School at Yeshiva University, okay? And he just said 1636. He can show off a little bit that he's a professor, okay? So, page 51. Oh, I got to do something. All right, here we go. <laughs> Adiru, Adiru, sound like a Jewish melody. It's Holland, after all. Oh, it's Holland. Okay. <laughs> Dutch melody. Keep going. Do another one on page 452. Beautiful melody. <laughs> So, Professor Goffin, now that we have you here, can we ask a few questions about a Jewish liturgical music? And is there a connection between, let's say, the Canterbury, not the Canterbury Tales, but the, uh, the <laughs> songs of the church, the ancient songs of the church, and uh, Jewish music? Well, according to Professor Abraham Tzvi Edelson, oh. who lived between 1875 and 1942, um, he... The Gregorian uh, chants. Yes, he was, a, he was an expert in Gregorian chants, got his PhD in Leipzig University, and he did a study. He was an expert in it. I'm impressed, did, I'm impressed. I'm so far He did impressed. a study uh, of all the Gregorian chants, and was, he was as well a cantor, and he became to... He decided to examine all the musics of the Jews all over the world, from Cochin Jews to, uh, to Arabian Jews to East European Jews, German Jews. Bronx? Bronx Jews, I don't think he cared about too much. But, uh, but he found... No respect. A, a similarity between certain melodies of the Gregorian Church, which were collected about the year 600, and the music of the Yemenites. Now, the Yemenites had no idea who the Gregorian Church was or the, or the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church certainly didn't know much about Yemenites. But somehow, they both said that their melodies came from the temple. 
And in many cases, certain statistically uh, correct and significant uh, uh, cases, he found similarities between Gregorian chant and Yemenite chant. That we cannot prove that they came from the temple, but at least it gives us some inkling into the possibility that maybe these, these, these songs still live. Fascinating. Hopefully. Fascinating. Can I take a class with you? Anytime. How much does it cost? Uh, Bell School of Jewish Music, 600 credit. Oh, 600 credit. Okay, okay. All right. We'll use the money we collect for the Seder. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to Kent. Let's go to, to uh, Shlomo Kavach. Tell us who Shlomo Kavach was. Shlomo Kavach lived here on the west side. Was he uh, born on the west side? No, he was born in Germany. Oh. His uh, family came here in the late 1930s. They escaped uh, from uh, the terrible Hitler times. And his father first became a rabbi in the uh, young Israel of Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, even though he didn't know a word of English. They tried to teach him English, but it didn't work, so he only lasted a year or two. And then he, he, uh, they came back to the, they came to the west side. They heard, there was, they heard there was a little brownstone on 79th Street available uh, for rent. And they rented it, and they began a congregation called Kilat Yaakov. Meanwhile, little Shlomo had gone to the Lubavitcher Yeshiva. He came from a very German background, but he went to Lubavitcher Yeshiva, and he became uh, familiar with Hasidic music, the very uh, uh, intense, joyous type of singing that uh, you, you have among the Hasidim. And he became an affiliate, a, a, an aficionado of this type of music. And uh, he started teaching himself guitar, and by the time it was in the late 50s, uh, he had already composed many, many me melodies, and he uh, made his first record uh, uh, in the, uh, the mid-1960s, which, which took off, became the most famous record in the history of Jewish music. Uh, all his melodies, somehow he had this ability to create melodies that were very catchy. He could, he could create a melody that anybody else who wrote it, they would think he's, he's crazy. He could repeat many phrases over and over again. Like we did just a little Shana Haba, right? What was the song? It was really catchy, wasn't it? Well, listen to the song. da 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 Doesn't go anywhere. But yet, it's catchy. He had that ability to put in syncopation into all songs. And he became the most popular composer of Jewish music in history. A very special man that not everybody appreciated when he was alive. Because he was a rabbi who played guitar. Many, many of the religious Jews uh, felt that he was, it was inappropriate for a rabbi to play guitar in, 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 in the 60s. That's why so I they played. pushed him away. They pushed him to Greenwich Village. He found this place in Greenwich Village, and he became the rabbi to all the hippies. And uh, he, until his last day of life, he walked around with an open shirt with his, his chest hair sticking out with a big mug and dove and long Berkeley. hair. Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, Berkeley. He the opened house up of the House of Love and Prayer. Uh, in Israel, he also had a, uh, in Modine, Modine. he started, he, he started a following of people who, who had no background, who were looking for some, some meaning in life, and they, they, they naturally gravitated to Shlomo Karbach. But once he died, one thing that Rabbi Avi Weiss of Riverdale once said, when people looked at him when he was alive, they said, ah, 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 his music is nice, but, but once he died, and the, his earthly uh, uh, trappings left him, and all that was left with the soul, his soul, his pure soul, the soul of his music, his music really took off. And today, in, there is no concert, there is no event where people do not sing songs of Shlomo Karba. Okay, so let's sing one. Really? Yeah. After all that, you... Yeah. <laughs> you <whip his> I'm <laughs> ready. El Bene! El okay. The refrain is El Bene. <laughs> God rebuild, okay? I expect you all to sing it out. What do you mean, what page? We're on page 50. 5 0, El Bene. When I sing it out, you no. repeat after me. 51. 51. 51. Adiru. El Bene. Okay, you see it, El Bene? God We're rebuild. Start with the last words. I didn't hear them, Chaz, and they're, they're, they're schwach, very schwach, very weak, very weak. They have to do a louder. Yeah, they're not going to leave. I want the doors locked. El Benay, say El Benay. Say it louder. El Benay. Louder. El Benay. El Benay. El Benay. Amir! Ah, dear, who? Yeah, 
beito, ivne beito, beito bekaro. Hey, I do. Ivne beito, ivne beito, beito bekaro. You're gonna regret coming. Ivne beito, beito bekaro. wife feed you okay you're good okay and now we get to the song echad mi odea who knows one okay who knows one page 53 53 okay so this is sort of like an anagram we ask who knows one and one is one is alejandro god is one only one god is one pt god is one Okay, then we ask God who's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We go up to 550, okay? But we're not going to do them all tonight. All right, we're just going to do 13, okay? So let's do the traditional melody first, right? G minor, G minor everybody, G minor. Get my tongue. Echad Elokeinu Shabbat Shammayim Uva'at Who knows two? Two of the tablets. Shnei Luchot Tabrit Echad Elokeinu Shabbat Shammayim Uva'at Page 54. The very last one has 13. Shlosha <laughs> Okay, everybody, follow me. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh, baby, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh, baby, who knows one? I know one. 
One is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth, I said, who? Ah, who ah ah? Oh baby, who? Ah, who ah ah? Who knows two? I know two. Two are the tablets that Moshe brought, and one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem in the heavens and the earth. Ooh, 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 ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Oh, baby, who knows three? I know three. Three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. Grace and one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth, I said, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh baby, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, what a way of earning a living, huh? Ooh, ah, ah, I said, who knows four? I know four. Four are the mothers and three are the fathers and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth, I said, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh baby, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, oh baby, who knows five? I know five. Five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem. Who one is Hashem? Who one is Hashem? In the heavens and the earth, I said, ooh. Ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh baby, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, who knows six? I know six. Six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mamas, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem. Who knows seven? I know seven. Seven are the days of the week, and six are the orders of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. And the heavens and the earth. Ooh, 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 ooh. Who knows eight? I know eight. Eight are the days to frisk. And seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah. And five are the books of the Torah and four are the mamas and three are the papas and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. In the heavens and the earth, they said, Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, oh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Who knows nine? I know nine. Nine are the months that the baby's born, and eight are the days of the brish, and seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets that Moshe brought. And what is Hashem? What is Hashem? What is Hashem? You are nuts. Okay. In the heavens and the earth, I said, Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Who knows ten? I know ten. Ten are the holy, holy commandments. commandments. And nine are the months that the baby's born. And eight are the days to the rest. And seven are the days of the week. And six are the books of the Mishnah. And five are the books of the Torah. And four are the mamas. And three are the fathers. And two are the mothers. And Moshe brought. And one is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. Where's the defibrillator? <laughs>
in the heavens and the earth. They said, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Who knows 11? Nobody here knows 11. You're all beginners, you. <laughs> 11. Who knows 11? Habiba, what's 11? Stars are joy. All right. Joseph's dream. 11 are the stars in Joseph's, Joseph's dream. dream. Why 11, not 12? He was the 12th. Okay? They all bowed down to him, his brothers. Okay? 11 are the stars That's in Joseph's, Joseph's dream. dream. And 10 are the holy, holy commandments. And nine are the months to the babies born, and eight are the days of the rich, and seven are the days of the week, and six are the books of the Mishnah, and five are the books of the Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the temples, and Moshe, Brian, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, one is Hashem, in the heavens and the earth. I said, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, a little syncopation here, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, no. Who knows 12? I know 12. 12 are the tribes of Israel. And 11 are the stars in Joseph's dream. And 10 are the holy commandments. And 9 are the months to the babies born. And 8 are the days of the rich. And 7 are the days of the week. And 6 are the books of the Mishnah. And 5 are the books of the Torah. And 4 are the three of the Mishnah. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. One, One is Hashem. Hashem. Do we really have to do the 50? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll quit at 13. Okay. <laughs> and the heavens and the earth. I said, ooh. Ah, ooh, ah, ah. I said, ooh. Ah, ooh, ah, ah. Uh, ooh. ooh. Uh, Who knows 13? Uh, I know 13. 13 are the attributes of God's mercy. And twelve are the tribes of Israel, and eleven are the stars in Joseph's dream, and ten are the holy commandments, and nine are the months that the baby's born, and eight are the days that are rich, and seven are the days that are awake, and six are the works of the Mishnah, and five are the works of Torah, and four are the mothers, and three are the fathers, and two are the tablets, and one and one is Hashem. Amir, Amir, Amir. One is Hashem. 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 <laughs> In the heavens and the earth. Do you want your son to be a cantor? Do you want your son to be a cantor? This guy is good. This guy is good. Okay. The last song. What's the last song? I don't know. Pad Gadya. One little kid. A goat. One little coat. And of course, the story of Pad Gadya is the story of the Jewish people, right? The one little goat is the Jewish people. And it passes through the trials and tribulations of all of history. Whether they come to bite us, or to burn us, or to hit us, or to slaughter us. And the Almighty comes and He saves us. What's your question, Alejandro? Why 13 and not 13? Because if there had been 14, you would have asked why 14 and not 13. <laughs> why is the 13 number? Well, 13 is a very special number in Judaism, okay? There are 13 attributes of God's mercy. There are 13... 13 is the Bar Mitzvah age. There are 13 principles of faith of Maimonides, okay? So 13 is a pretty heavy number. And I guess, uh, thank God he stopped at 13. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So now we get to the one little goat, Chad Gadja. The traditional melody cantor. Do you still remember that? <clears throat> Goes After back. singing with you, I forgot it, I think. Yeah, I know. Okay, here we go. Chad God. Ya khad sounds like an anthem ya te hisabin ababi trezu ze khad god ya khad god ya ve atashun of ya khal god te hisabin ababi trezu ze khad God, God, yeah, Victoria, God, 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 yeah. So what happens? First
first the cat comes and eats the goat, and then the the dog comes and beats the dog comes and, and, and eats bites and cat. bites the cat, and then the stick comes and hits the dog. The fire comes and burns the stick. The water comes and quenches the fire. The goat comes. I mean, the cow comes and eats the and drinks the water. The slaughterer comes and slaughters the cow. The angel of death comes and slaughters the slaughterer. And then the Almighty comes and slaughters the angel of death. And that's our great hope that uh, ultimately uh, death will be banished from the face of the earth and all tears will be wiped away Amen. and that the Jewish people will prevail and there will be peace, happiness, and tranquility uh, throughout the world. Amen. Soon, soon. <clears throat> So just keep drinking that wine and it'll absolutely happen, <laughs> whether it happens in reality or not, okay? One do, you want to do one more stanza? It's just, it's just a beautiful melody, okay? Sure. <laughs> God, yeah, should do the last one, which has yeah, do the last one. Okay. Everything combined. The last one on page fifty-six. The Atta Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Shachat LeMalach Hamavet. He killed the angel of death. The Shachat LeShochet. Killed the slaughterer. The Shachat LeTorah. Killed the ox. The Shachat LeMayim. Drank the water. The Chaval LeNura. Extinguished the fire. The Sarav LeChutra. from New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, Connecticut. The Fryan Book Wall on the Southern Boulevard in the Bronx. <laughs> All right, now, in the Southern Boulevard in the Bronx, there was a rabbinic conference, you know, and they said, you know, enough of these uh, maudlin melodies, these sad melodies, these sad songs, we got to bring it into the 20th century. That was then. I didn't say 21st, okay? So it goes like this. Everybody with me, okay? Um, it's your show. Um, <laughs> God, God, yeah, oh baby, 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 yeah, God, 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 God, yeah, oh baby, God, God, yeah, oh baby, God, yeah, oh baby, God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah, oh baby, God, God, yeah, God, God, yeah, oh baby, God, God, yeah, oh baby. The fire comes, yeah. Now the fire comes, extinguishes the fire. I mean, the water comes, extinguishes the fire. Baby, God, God, yeah, oh, baby, God, God. The Atamaya de Kavale, Nura de Zarafle, Futra de Hikale, Kalba de Nashale, Shumra de Yahlale. 
Gadjad is up and up it plays who's a cock. And now the ox comes and drinks the water. The Ata Torah Vishat Kale. Mayad is a valley. Nura de Sarafle. Kutra de Hikale. Kalbad in a shaflet. Shunra woof 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 woof. Meow meow. And now the slaughterer comes and kills the ox. The Atacho Chet Veshachat Le Torah Uluk Le Maya De Kavale Nura De Saraf Le Chuna De Hikale Kalba De Nashach Le Meow. Gad Yad is up in a babitre zuzechad gad And now the angel of death comes The Yad HaMalach HaMavit v'shachat le Shochet v'shachat le Torah mu Chemaya de Kavale Nura de Saharaf le Chutra de Hikale Bow wow le Ashach le Miao Achla le Meh Zabin Ababitrei Zuzi Now the Almighty comes and Terminates the Angel of Death The Yad HaKadosh Baruch Hu V'shachat le Malach HaMavet Dishachat le, shochet dishachat le, Torah dishachat le, Maya dekava le, Nura disaraf le, Chutra dehika le, Kalba dinashach le, Shunra diyachla le, Gadja disabit ababit reizu zechad, Gadja oh baby, Hot Gadja. That was from Southern Boulevard in the Bronx. <laughs> and one last song. <laughs> one last song. You with me? Yeah. Gloria. Yeah. Gloria. Yeah. <laughs> when Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard, they could not stand. Everybody, oh, let, let my, my people, people go. Miriam, go down. Moses, way, way down, down in Egypt land. land. Tell old Pharaoh. Let my people go, 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 go. I said, go down, Moses. Repeat after me. Go down, Moses. I said, go down, Moses. 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 And tell old Pharaoh, tell old Pharaoh, tell old Pharaoh, tell him hard. Let, Let my, my people, people. This is like enduring slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me an epidural? <laughs> Go 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 down Moses Hey go down Moses Go down Moses Go down Moses Go down Moses Way down in Egypt land In Egypt land Tell old Pharaoh Tell old Pharaoh Funny fat Pharaoh Funny fat Pharaoh Let my Let my people go Yerushalayim, Shana Haba, 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 Yerushalayim, Sh
You know that we, you know what we didn't do tonight. What we not do? And you know, Mark, Mark's eret eret a tayer Yiddish, a tayer Yiddish, yeah. And we didn't do manoyme, manoyme, manadabe, hoy ve, manadabe. Und neun Minuten zum Trocken, und acht Tage zum Riss, <lacht> und sieben Tage <lacht> zum Bach, und sechs mich da ist, und fünf mal ich mal hier im Haupt, drei Haupt und zwei Luch Haupt, und Gott ist eine, und, und weiter keine. Where'd you grow up? On the west side? Ein Gott in Himmel. Ein Gott in Himmel, okay. Anyway, thank you very, very much, everybody. Psaki Septimus. All right. Thank you, sir. Remember, it's Friday night. Remember a Wednesday week? night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night is what? Well. Anti-BDS program. Anti-BDS program right here at Lincoln Square Synagogue. Anti-BDS BDS is the anti-boycott, divestment, and the boycott group, okay? What time is it? It's 7 o'clock here. Okay, and Very important we're going to reaffirm the that God's covenant stands for us at all times. Now, you can keep the, uh, the Haggadah, so yours to take. We have some refreshments here. <laughs> the Is that what the we have, the cookies? <laughs> That's it? They didn't come bring cakes? No cakes? Okay, no cake, sorry. Okay. The same okay. The same okay. Um, also, if you want to sell your chametz, I'm here. There's literature on the I desk that you can too. take. I came because And there you. is really? the yeah. Passover yeah. guide from so the OU you. with all so the kosher well. products. I was up in your how to make your own kosher. So um, there's a money that you did. Uh, uh, that Shlomo I'm sorry I didn't record that. That was such a magnificent evening. Remember, it was inside. I can't even remember where it was, but you're not going to get me to sit down. But you can. Oh, I did all Shlomo songs. Okay, all those Shlomo songs. That was too bad. That was.